how much is left in terms of upside with the expectation that we get a deal? Yeah, I mean, I think the premise of the markets rally for weeks now has been progress on trade. I think any message of de-escalation is what the market feeds off of. And it's not about the details. It's not even about when. It's about make sure tariffs are on a track to come down. And um, really, it's just about releasing the pressure valve on the global economy, right? So I don't think it's about the market saying this means great things for U.S. companies. It means it's a way to release global growth a little bit. And you're seeing yields around the world lift in response to this. You see the 10-year Treasury yield getting back to its September highs, just about 1.9 percent. And so it's a big relaxation trade what? because we were afraid of things that had not come to pass. What's the extent of the risk to disappointment? How well, much of this is priced in? It's interesting. It's getting, it's getting to, to a point where the markets are stretching and testing uh, how much good news it's going to take to keep going higher, right? Because if 3115 in the S&P 500, we're just, you know, half a percent from there or something like that, is a 3% advance off the prior record high. None of the record highs since January 2018 went past that. So this is telling you that the market's wanting to test to see just how uh, how positive it can take these things. Same thing going uh, for, for the bond market right now. So I do think if you have any backsliding on the good news on trade, sure, that's going to be the excuse for this rally, which is getting a little stretched anyway, to back off a bit. Fed looks pretty smart, right? Sure. Saying the economy was going to hang in there and the trade would not go off Absolutely. the rails. What does it say that the market's done better under the hiking phase than it's done under the cutting phase? Uh, well, or at least under the stopping of the cutting exactly. phase. Yeah, I think the market has basically said, you know what, um, the best case scenario that was set up by the Fed, which was three incremental cuts and then we're done and we're going to wait and see that mid-cycle pause, we're going to bet that that's the case here. Because um, there's been I, a lot of analogs on the three, right? Yeah. Something well, two, magic about two three. Two important ones, which were both in the 90s. Um, it's not a good sample size, but it's what people are going to run with for now. Uh, Scott, we haven't forgot about you as we approach 3,100 on the S&P. Give me your overall take in terms of where the market stands and what your expectations are. Well, David, you know, really, we're just above uh, 3030 is the midpoint, year end midpoint for us uh, for the S&P 500 of our target range. Uh, so we're just above the top end of that. Yeah, you know, I think stocks are pretty close to fair value. And really for us, I, I think what's going to, you know, clearly the market has anticipated some trade positives coming in. I'm not sure the market has anticipated, let's say, a rollback of the September tariffs. Yeah. Certainly has anticipated the December ones not coming online. I think that's uh, that's probably a good way to think about it. And really, between now and year end, and maybe now and the beginning of the year, while we might be at fair value now, you have to remember there's a lot of uh, investors, whether they're pros or retail investors, they are underinvested here. And and for us, the question is, if we get some kind of a reasonable trade deal. It doesn't have to be great. A reasonable one. You know, does that bring the chasers in who are underinvested? Because if you're a professional, your benchmarks, the S&P 500, I mean, you cannot sit here on your hands and watch the market run higher. Now, of course, if these trade talks fall apart and everybody walks away, you know, our year in target's going to probably be too high. But, you know, certainly I think it's proper to lean toward some type of minor trade deal coming through. Uh, and I think, as I said, the magnitude here going into year end is probably going to come down to how much chasing are we going to see from people who are underinvested. Scott, you say it's uh, hard to bet against the American consumer right now. What would be some of the risks to that sentiment? Well, well, certainly if, uh, you know, one of the leading indicators that we like to watch quite a bit is a number that came out this morning, initial jobless claims. I mean, 211,000, I mean, that is a great, great number. You know, you guys have been lo around long enough to remember that, you know, even in the best of times historically, you'd see a 300 or 320,000 uh, number out of initial jobless claims. I mean, these numbers here uh, are really, really low. And so I think really for us, the consumers pulling the wagon forward. That's been the case. The, the baton hasn't been handed off to corporations doing a bunch of capex spending. So what we're really trying to pay attention to is what is going to happen uh, with the consumer. Um, we know that uh, uh, the job market's pretty darn good out there. We know we're seeing some uh, wage increases that are modest to good. And so as long as we see things as we look ahead that tell us that's going to continue to happen, um, you know, we want to stick with this consumer discretionary sector. We've been in it for a long time, uh, and it's been the right way to be. So, so we feel pretty good about like uh, pretty good about that. But certainly, we'd love to see some some business capex spending come in here, and I think that it would help extend this expansion. 
Yeah. On that point, Mike Deutsch has got a nice chart out today looking at the discrepancy between corporate CEO confidence yeah. and consumer confidence. It's at a record high. The split is at a record high. Yes. So who do we trust, the CEOs or the consumers? Um, I think you trust the CEOs in the sense that it really does manifest a lot more in terms of business spending. Uh, as opposed to consumer mood. And in fact, there's another uh, chart that goes around, which is the spread between uh, consumer confidence, the present conditions, and consumer yep. sentiment. So these are all saying, yeah, it's still probably late cycle, but jobless claims are saying we're not seeing the turn upward in unemployment uh, insurance claims. Therefore, that doesn't say you're at the end of a cycle. So I think you have this tension that's going to be with us basically until it ends, and it could be a long time. So the CEO thing, I think trade is so front and center and politics are going to be front and center for CEOs for a while, I think, through the election. And that's why I don't think they're, they're not, they're, they're human as well, right? They're just kind of picking up what the mood is. It's not just about uh, pure economic funding. Yeah.